This week, the PCC Cup Series makes its final stop of the European Tour before we head back stateside. Uh, we're at Brands Hatch this week, which will be interesting as there's a couple local drivers in the field that managed to make their way in through the qualifier. We've got Sam Watkins in the number 20. Uh, that car is making its second start of the year. It made its first start at Central Russia. And we also have Ben Atkins in the field uh, in the five car. He made his way in. Uh, by thoroughly dominating the qualifier until he got held up by a lapped car. We also have Paul Green in the number 23, and as a couple of drivers have said, that car is quite frankly hideous. So let's take you trackside. The pole sitter for this race is the number 39 of Nicholas Cordova driving for Griffith Motorsports as he leads the field down Brabham. We get the green flag, but we're not quite bunched up in the back. We're going to go green anyways as Nicholas Cordova leads the field into Paddock Hill as he gets a good run over outside pole sitter Louis Ballard there. Third place Clara Kindle tries to go through but is unable to do so. Looks like fourth place is Jacob Eichholz, teammate to Nicholas Cordova as Cordova gets a good run headed into Graham Hill and onto Cooper and it looks like he is going to hold the lead. Now coming into Westfield we've got some trouble here in the back as it looks like Pete Maverick is shooting for a gap that isn't there and he turns Scott Wallen into the wall. Ryan Jeffries also involved as now we're gonna ride aboard Scott Wallen and see exactly what happened as it looks like he's riding uh, right next to Ryan Jeffries. He opens up a little gap and Pete Maverick shoots for it as he goes into the wall and I believe that is going to be the race for Scott Wallen as he is going to drop out after lap one due to that crash damage. Now, Nicholas Cordova comes down and he will lead lap one as he's opened up quite a gap over Louis Ballard. Here on uh, lap, still on lap one, Brian Gallagher gets into uh, Preston Bell and Ben Worthington also goes into the tires in the Clark curve coming on to Brabham. So tough day for those in the back as Brian Gallagher is trying to work his way up after a botched qualifying effort. Here, headed into Pilgrim's Deep, uh, it looks like Greg Woodard gets hooked by a fellow Lycoya driver. I believe that was Richard Dean MacGyver in the number 85, but Greg Woodard doing a good job here so far today. He is running in 19th place as Ben Atkins, the hometown hero, is giving uh, a very strong run. He is currently in 10th place here on lap two. So a good qualifying effort, and it looks like he is running pretty well here in the race too as he hopes to impress the home crowd as he heads through Clark and on to Brabham to complete lap number two. Here is Daniel Sharp as he gets punted off the track by string fellow Vincent. He's gonna hang on, go through the grass a bit in Paddock Hill, and he's gonna merge back on the track. We did not expect him to make this race, but uh, due to some misfortunes for others in the qualifier, he did make it into the main race, so props to him. He is running uh, a bit back in the field. He's running in around uh, the top 20. Now here is Claire Ausier, and she's going to try and make a pass here for fifth place on Jacob Eicholtz. Eicholtz having a very strong run so far, but your championship leader, Claire Ausier, is trying to minimize the damages of Nicholas Cordova's leading, as Cordova's is one of her main rivals in the championship, as she is slowly surging her way towards the front at this point as uh, the field kind of works their way through. Here's Brian Gallagher, he's running in 38th place, trying to work his way up through the field as he's giving Kelly Blackwater a couple shots, trying to get her out of the way. And he hooks her into the wall, and he goes into the wall himself, and that is going to be the end of the race for Brian Gallagher as he falls out from 38th on lap number three. Tough break for him. He had a really fast car here in all the practice sessions. Unfortunately, he messed up in his qualifying lap, and he found himself stuck back in the field, and Kelly Blackwater just shot across the track into his door and that took him out of the race as now we're going to look at Andy Lambert last year's championship winner running for ROG Motorsports he's currently running in the top 20 here having a good run and it appears that there's a jam up uh, up near the front as we've got a couple cars around in the back as it looks like I believe that is the 78 of Greg Maddox stopped in the middle of the track as it looks like Andy Lambert is going to pick up a position or two there as we're going to see what happened here to the 78. It looks like he just broke down uh, from the top 10 as he's a bit slow in the middle of the track. Michael Grant gets into him there as he's trying to uh, stay out of the way and a uh, couple cars trying to wake, work their way around and Mikko Rantanen just doesn't bother to use the brakes there in the back 
and a couple other cars are piling in. Not really sure what's going on there. Mikko Rantanen, he looks for a gap, and for some reason, uh, his car shoots to the right. Maybe he got on the throttle a bit too much, but he's blocking Stringfellow Vincent from getting through. Uh, everybody gets their cars righted. And uh, we're looking at Lenny Jacobs here. As he gets on the throttle, his car shoots to the right, goes into the grass. He shoots across the track, gets into Damon Jones, and he spins himself out. Uh, not really sure why he did that, but it made him look pretty foolish. Uh, now we're looking at Jacob Eichholz, who's currently running in the... I believe he's running in sixth position at this point, uh, lap five, and he's having a very strong run. His teammate is currently leading, and uh, he's doing a good job matching him. He's currently uh, running in the top ten, giving this car a very well-deserved good run. Uh, Jacob Eichholz doing quite well here today. As now we've got uh, Chris Winter battling side-by-side -side with Dave Hetzel here for the seventh position on lap six. And it looks like uh, Chris Winter is going to go through, and he is going to take the uh, he's going to take the seventh position here, as uh, we are currently on lap number six. A lot of good battling going on early on. It was mentioned during the pre-race that there are a couple other local drivers aside from Ben Atkins making their starts uh, here at Brands Hatch. This is Sam Watkins driving the number 20 car for the motorsports team, and he's currently running in 31st position, giving this car a respectable run. Uh, he's brought aboard Clark Energy onto this car, and uh, uh, he's doing a decent job so far considering uh, how underfunded this team is. And right behind him running in 32nd is Paul Green running this number 23 car, which uh, a bunch of drivers had called uh, fairly hideous. So he's running in 32nd place right now running uh, his family-sponsored uh, Jaguar, and... Uh, I wish him the best of luck, but that car is a pain to look at, to be entirely honest. Here is uh, Chris Benson as he is getting ready to go one lap down. He made an unscheduled pit stop to repair some damage when uh, he piled into a mess in the back with uh, Greg Maddox as he just kind of lets Nicholas Cordova's go. His European tour has not been very uh, eventful, nor has it been very fast. Uh, Chris Benson definitely struggling as we near the closure of the European Tour. As here is Clara Kindle as she runs in third place behind Nicholas Cordova's and her teammate Louis Ballard. Uh, Clara Kindle, she won her first race at Central Russia at the Ural Ring and uh, she's looking very strong here today as it appears that she has turned the corner and is really attempting to drop that uh, nickname that I gave her Clara Crashall though uh, that may not be the case as it looks like Greg Greg Woodard gets caught up in a mess with Pete Maverick as oh he gets a bit airborne as he goes across the track into Daniel Sharp it looks like Woodard is going to keep going though as we wreck here on this is lap number 10 now as he wrecks from 22nd place Pete Maverick was trying to work his way through the field as uh, it looks like he was held up by Woodard he gives him a shot here and he turns him into the wall, goes across the track, and the same thing that happened to Brian Gallagher happens to him as he'll go out of the race after trying to take out a car that was in his way. Uh, karmic retribution, I guess, as we're going to go on board Daniel Sharp and see exactly what he saw as Greg Woodard uh, got up on two wheels there. Daniel Sharp will continue on, though. Uh, perseverance from the 0-1 car as John Bracci brings his car into the pits from 16th place on lap number 12. We might be seeing the beginning of green flag pit stops here. I'm not too sure, but I think it's because he's got some left side damage on that car. Yep, definitely some left side damage. He's getting that repaired right now. Currently lap 12 of 40, as here is Robert Nelson running in 24th position. He made a start last week at Euro Speedway and nearly won the thing up until a late caution put him out of contention for the win. He's currently running in 24th right now, running right behind Dan Ferre in that number 222. And uh, he's giving this car a respectable run, considering that uh, he's been DNQing for races left and right. So it, it looks like he started to get uh, his, he started to get his act together and he started to qualify for these races. Here is Jacob Eicholtz being held up by Dan uh, Dan Sharp, who made an unscheduled pit stop to repair that damage, as it looks like we're going to go three wide going down Paddock Hill. No, they sort it out, but headed into Druids, I think. Oh, Chris Winter makes a move on the inside, almost go three wide again, 
as Dan Sharp wisely backs out of that, as now uh, it looks like Jacob Eichholz and Chris Winter are side by side for the fifth position, uh, headed down Cooper and into, uh, I believe this is Surtees, headed into Pilgrim's Drop, and it looks like Chris Winter is going to get the edge as Chris Winter surges forward. Chris Winter headed towards the front as we head down here, and uh, Chris Winter definitely gets the position. Ian Elias having some trouble in this number 32 car. He just took the lead in, uh, a, in an online league that a bunch of drivers have in PCC Racer 2012. Unfortunately, that experience is not going to help him as it looks like Lewis Jones slams into the back of Cameron Taylor. Uh, we're going to go on board Lewis Jones and see what happened here as uh, it just appears to be some miscommunication between the spires as he tries to go uh, as he tries to go right but Cameron Taylor swerves right in front of him and that will take him out of the race. Uh, Nicholas Cordovo's now as he encounters Kale Burnfart Jr. trying to put him a lap down and uh, Burnfart Jr. has been holding up a lap like half a lap before this as now Burnfart Jr. is doing everything he can to block him as uh, he didn't take too kindly to getting turned there as uh, Corey Dovos has a look inside but Burnfart Jr. swerves across the track in front of him as he continues to hold him up head down this long straight here headed into Hawthorns uh, so he's still not moving out of the way Kale Burnfart Jr. blocking the leader he's been blocking him for about a lap a full lap now as now it looks like Louis Ballard is starting to catch as he gives him another shot as Kale Burnfart Jr. displays excellent car control holds onto it as Corradovos gets some right side damage out of that as now Louis Ballard is right on the bumper of the number 39 car as Corradovos is understandably furious at the number 51 car as he goes to the outside headed into uh, Clark Curve as he gets around him finally as the 51 car dives onto pit road to repair some of that damage. Uh, Nicholas Cordovos was understandably furious over the radio, uh, yelling at his crew to tell the 51 Spire to go. Uh, I, I can't tell you exactly what he said, but uh, I think you understand what I mean. As now Louis Ballard is up to second place, running right behind Cordovos. Uh, Cordovos is a bit damaged as he's getting held up by Lenny Jacobs here in the number 52, as it appears that the leaders are indeed. Uh, or it looks like second and third place are beginning to catch up as it looks like he's having some trouble negotiating the lap traffic he tries to go to the inside uh, but there's some miscommunication between the spotters as now Louis Ballard is right up on the back bumper of Nicholas Cordova's waiting for him to make a move on the number 52 car here as it appears that he can't really negotiate lap traffic he pulls to the inside head into Druids and it looks like Ballard is going to follow suit as now Clara Kindall is right on the bumper of Ballard. As lap traffic is definitely holding up, uh, Cordovo's the leader right now. Here's Paul Green again. He just went a lap down, holding up Claire Aussier, and she doesn't take too kindly to that, and she promptly punts him off the track. Uh, how ironic, we've got a Jaguar wrecked in front of some Jaguar advertisements. Thought that was pretty funny. Here is Damon Jones currently running in 25th position at the halfway point and uh, this is the first race he's qualified for since Talladega so uh, he's making his first star of the European Tour in the last race of the European Tour uh, Damon Jones doing all, doing an alright job running right behind Dan Lechleiter in that 110 car he's uh, Dan Lechleiter trying to keep himself afloat in the top 30 battle uh, Chester Benson actually DNQ'd for this race as here's Robert Nelson as he's holding up John Bracci, that is for position now, because Bracci pit, and oh, he turns him into the inside wall. Uh, Robert Nelson displays some excellent car control, holds onto it, but uh, Bracci just kind of punted him out of the way as if he was holding him up, even though that was for position and he had every right to block. As now this is also for position too. Dan Ferre, uh, as it looks like John Bracci is going to pull on the inside of him, Dan Ferre pulls down to block as he does indeed have the right to do so and he gets turned on the front straightaway and Robert Nelson also gets collected as uh, I believe the officials are going to want to have a meeting with John Bracci after this as uh, quite frankly this was uncalled for 
As you see, he blocks that. He moves down, blocks his position, hangs onto it, hits the outside wall, and he gets slammed by Robert Nelson, who just had nowhere to go, but straight into him. As I, as Robert Nelson now, his day is done, as he was having a decent run. As here we go on board Nicholas Cordovos, who's trying to negotiate a bunch of the lap traffic because of the smoking car of Robert Nelson. He gets stuck on the outside of uh, Lecklider head into this turn, and there goes. Louis Ballard on the inside of Graham Hill as he goes down Cooper and he takes the lead as a costly mistake for Nicholas Cordovos will indeed cost him the lead here on uh, I believe this is lap number 21 as it looks like Louis Ballard he was just watching the situation and he made a very tactical move as he pulls to the inside and he just goes around Nicholas Cordovos and that will hand him the lead as I don't believe Cordovos can catch back up as here we're looking at Louis Ballard, the new leader, as uh, Clara Kindall is sitting back there trying to negotiate Sam Watkins up to third place now. As uh, green flag pit stops are rumored to be beginning at this point as the cars are running kind of low on fuel. Damon Jones gets pushed wide as Nicholas Corvidoz dives onto pit road as green flag pit stops are indeed beginning as all three Manticore cars stay out and will inherit the top three. Here is Chris Winter running in fifth place. He's trying to negotiate some of the lap traffic. He's caught in a lap traffic sandwich as he turns uh, Lenny Jacobs into the inside wall, takes Ryan Jeffries with him, and the day is going to be over for both Ryan Jeffries and Chris Winter. Tough break for Winter. He was running in the top five and had a very strong run. He looked like he was going to have a very strong run, uh, possibly contending for a podium, but that will take him out of the race, unfortunately, as now Louis Ballard on lap number 20. 24 will dive onto pit road as uh, he also brings his teammate uh, Clara Kendall as well as in the back there there's Claire Ausier so all three Manticore cars are pitting on the same lap all three of them have the same strategy a uh, very good strategy indeed for them as now Dave Hetzel inherits the fifth position and he will bring uh, the rest of the field uh, the rest of the leaders onto pit road as uh, brings them down. As Louis Ballard pulls out, you can see in the back there, uh, that is the fifth place car uh, pulling onto pit road. So he comes out right as they're coming in. Here is Barton Sandy uh, running in 17th and he gets turned into the wall and wrecked by John Bracci as Bracci's reign of destruction continues on the rest of the field. Uh, the car that was running in fourth place, Jacob Eichholz, he stays out an extra lap, uh, lasting until lap number 25. And he brings his car onto pit road. And he will get credit for leading one lap. And that will earn him a bonus point, which will be very good for this team in the long run. As he pulls his car onto pit road and into his pit stall. As, here, as he pulled into pit road, the 49 car, it looks like the 55 car gets punted by his teammate off. In Paddock Hill, he goes into the wall, and as if his day couldn't get any worse, he already went a lap down, and he gets punted off by his teammate. As here he comes through, same lap. Uh, he had just recovered, and Claire Ausier just kind of punts him off in Graham Hill, and he ends up uh, going to play in the grass a bit. I'm surprised he hasn't parked it at this point, but he continues going. Uh, the fighting spirit of the 55 team is immeasurable at this point as uh, uh, quite frankly I don't think his day could have gotten any worse at this point. Here is John Bracci. He made a pit stop to repair his car after running into the uh, Barton Sandy mobile. As he uh, gets punted off, uh, honestly I do believe he deserved that uh, quite a bit. Cameron Taylor just, uh, he swerved in front of Cameron Taylor. I do think that was actually John Bracci's fault so uh, Bracci's destruction continues. After that round of pit stops, Nicholas Cordova was dropped down to fourth place as now he's trying to negotiate around Greg Woodard. He hooks him into the inside wall, but Greg Woodard holds on to it and continues to block uh, Nicholas Cordova's from getting through. Uh, Nicholas Cordova's is, uh, at this point, fuming, I'd imagine. Uh, he'd actually get around Greg Woodard in the next turn. Here comes uh, Sam Brown. It looks like Chris Benson just came out of the pits, and he hooks him into the wall. As if uh, Chris Benson's day couldn't get any worse, it just went from bad to worse, and from worse to terrible. 
as now Sam Brown continues on. Chris Benson's day is done as Dan Sharp just blew up from the 19th position. He had just gone a lap down and uh, quite unfortunate for that team. He was having a very strong run uh, considering his uh, the chance that we had for him making the race. And Preston Bell just piled in for no good reason. As you see Preston Bell, he trying to figure out where to go and he slams right into Dan Sharp. Here is Ben Worthington holding up Mikko Rantanen, who is having a very strong run today. He gets hooked into the inside wall, and he goes spinning across the track and into the wall. Ben Worthington, uh, the moving chicane, as we called him earlier in the European Tour. Uh, oh, it looks like Dave Hetzel just blew up from ninth place. He was running with a group from about fifth to ninth, but he blows up. Uh, tough break for him. He was, having, I mean, he was having a very strong run as he is... Uh, he likes to call himself a road course expert, and he stops the car on the track right there, and that will be day done for Dave Hetzel. Here's Sam Brown uh, holding up the leader, and uh, uh, I don't think he's moving over for Louis Ballard for some reason. And uh, quite frankly, I think Ballard's tired of that, and he turns him into the inside wall, and that's uh, going to be ca some karmic retribution for Sam Brown as he was the one who wrecked Chris Benson for really no apparent reason. Sam Brown still putzing around. He blocks uh, Claire Aussier. I think he's trying to get to the inside and they go into the wall and Claire Aussier rolls over that car and she will be done. Your championship leader has just wrecked out as now we're going to go on board Aussier and see what she saw as now she's coming up on Sam Brown. Uh, Sam Brown, I think, is trying to get over, and uh, she wanted to go to the right of him. But they go in; she goes into the tires as well as Sam Brown, and that car will roll over, and that will be the end of the day for your championship leader as of right now, Claire Aussier. Here is Michael Grant, who has had a very quiet run. He's moved himself up into the top five in this 18 car, and uh, he's become known as kind of a stealth bomber at these road courses. He stole a win at Vnukovo Airport, and he's got a couple other strong cars behind him, Gaspar D'Souza and Ramsey Cockiner among those, uh, running in 6th and 7th at this point. Here's Nicholas Cordova's being held up by Cameron Taylor, uh, trying to work around him as they head up down the Minter Strait, and now into Westfield. And uh, it looks like he got tired of that. He just punts Cameron Taylor off the track. Cameron Taylor shoots across the track and takes both of them into the tires. And that is going to be the end of the day for both Cameron Taylor and Nicholas Corridovos as Corridovos' overzealousness uh, basically got the better of him as he tried to get that lapped car out of the way. He just kind of bumps him out of the way. And Cameron Taylor tries to save the car, shoots across the track, and takes Corridovos into the outside wall. That will be the end of the day for both of them as Cordovas was indeed at the time running in the top five. I believe he was running fourth. So very tough break for him. He was hoping to gain some ground in the championship on Claire Aussier, but that was all for naught. Although I do think he will finish in front of her at this race. Here is Clara Kindall as she's gained a lot of ground on Louis Ballard as he's been held up by some lapped cars. Clara Kindall closing the gap on the leader. Here is a good battle going on uh, for fifth place at the moment between, uh, I believe this is either fifth or fourth, uh, between Michael Grant, Ramsey Cockiner, and Gaspar D'Souza as uh, they're being held up by the lapped car of Dan Lechleiter, who is currently running, I believe he's running in uh, about 20th through 25th, somewhere around there. But Ramsey Cockiner giving all he can to Michael Grant in the number 18 car as he slots in behind him. This battle's been going on for the past five laps. It's been very close between all of them. Here is Louis Ballard. He's coming up on Greg Woodard. Woodard trying to give him uh, his lane, but there's some miscommunication. Woodard goes into the inside wall, sweeps across the track. He comes across his nose again, and he gets wrecked. Louis Ballard goes around with some help from his teammate, Clara Kindall, and Louis Ballard, he has no idea what had gone on right there as he soldiers on. He's got some hood damage from going into the inside wall. Let's see what Clara Kindall saw. Clara Kindall saw. Um, it looks like Greg Woodard trying to give him room, not really sure where he's going. Woodard sweeps across the track, tries to save it, comes across the nose again, and Clara Kindall has already stuck her nose in there on the inside, so Louis Ballard just had nowhere to go 
but into his teammate's door, and that will, uh, they'll take the hood off of that number 41 car, but he's going to come out of the pits in sixth place, so uh, he still is going to have a very good run, despite missing his hood on that number 41 car. He's going to try and soldier on and finish this race, but now Clara Kindall looks to be unopposed at this point as both of her teammates have fallen by the wayside as she has a 38 second gap on the second place car who at the moment is Jacob Eichholz who had a very strong run. It seems like all of the top five cars aside from the two of them have had problems here today as uh, Claire, uh, Clara Kindall is now trying to negotiate the 12th place car of Richard Dean MacGyver as MacGyver uh, gives her quite a bit of room as she does have a reputation as a crasher. Uh, MacGyver gives her enough room and she does scoot by. Here is Ben Atkins, who in the closing stages of the race has moved up into the seventh position. Ben Atkins giving his home crowd a very strong run, a very respectable run, a very clean run actually. Uh, ben Atkins, he made another start earlier in the season at Hungaro Ring, but fell out very early on due to some suspension difficulties. But it looks like he's going to hold together and he will finish in the top 10 here as Clara Kindall now coming into the mainways, coming through Clark. It looks like she is going to take her second win of the season. Andy Lambert in front of her is going to finish uh, the race on the lead lap, but Clara Kindall will win here at Brands Hatch, her second victory of the season. Jacob Eichholz brings his car home in second place. That is his best career finish thus far. Michael Grant got around Ramsey Cockner for the third position. Ramsey Cockner finished fourth himself. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza rounds out the top five. Louis Ballard fell down to sixth position, uh, but still finished there despite missing his hood. How about a round of applause for Ben Atkins in that number five car? He brings that car home in seventh place. Good job for him in front of the home crowd. Ike Durbin, a very quiet run for him. He finishes in eighth place, kept the nose clean on that car, and he looks to be one of the main challengers for the championship at this point as he had worked his way up into third uh, before this race. Stringfellow Vincent brings his car home in a respectable ninth place, despite having some front-end damage after running into Mikko Rantanen. Speaking of Mikko Rantanen, he rounds out your top ten, and I'd like to give a shout-out to Andy Lambert, who is the only other car to finish on the lead lap. He finished in 11th.